Hello. Hello. Welcome back. So uh, I have uh, Katie Cheeseman, um, RLB, and just all around amazing human being with me. Uh, we're doing I'm in a car episode. I think this is number 28. Uh, maybe, really? Maybe 29. I just um, uploaded uh, Dave McKellstrom's oh, this morning. Oh, cool. So I'll be sending him the link. You get a chance to check it out. He was awesome. Uh, yeah, so uh, at, like usual, we just do a little introduction. Um, maybe Katie, you just give us a little kind of one minute Coles notes on where you've come from and what you're up to. Coles notes. So uh, I grew up in the UK. Many uh, people know that when they start talking to me. I thought you were Australian. Uh, really? No. No. I hope not. <laughs> I have lots of, lots of, not... Put another ship on the bobby! Anything against that. I've got some great Australian friends, but uh, I, uh, yeah, grew up in the UK. Uh, 15 years ago, moved here. Uh, was a U of G grad. Oh, yeah. New U. Um, yeah, go U of G Aggies, right? Yeah, yeah. So my agriculture background comes out. And um, then worked for Ontario government for a couple of years. That must have been fun. It was. Well, Fast paced. It was disaster assistance financing. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, good like, stuff. Real, like, riveting stuff. Actually, you know what? I worked with some awesome people there who became, like, lifelong friends. Any shout so. outs? Anybody? Shout outs. Shout outs to my BFF, Heather, who she's still there. Okay. And she's, like, she rules the world over there, in awesome. my opinion. Where do you go, Heather? Where? Yeah, go, Heather. Uh, then I went from there to Royal Bank, mm -hmm. and I was there for. Nine years, almost ten years. Um, also very fast-paced organization, right? Lots, yeah. Lots of change. You know, surprisingly, and this is not a sales pitch for them, they, as far as, you know, big banks move quickly, they, those guys are doing some pretty cool stuff over there. Well, so. to be fair, um, we bank with RBC. And uh, Troy Ford, Peter Guth, big shout out. You guys Ooh. rock. They're amazing. You're doing so, like major shout out. So thank you. Yeah, well, I mean, you gotta spread the love, right? Yeah, lots of love. Okay, Although, so RBC, and then you were in Fergus, right? For a little uh, bit? I was. So I had the pleasure while I was there of servicing both commercial and agricultural clients. Right. And over time, uh, my portfolio of clients kind of changed. Um, I have a personal passion through my own background of. Uh, helping agriculture businesses grow and um, <laughs> no pun intended no 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 pun intended <laughs> no pun intended uh, but not only that but transition yeah. um, like succession kind of yeah stuff? succession so I like to think of it um, a good you know shout out to to a dear friend of mine that calls it business continuity yep. rather than succession because you just want to keep uh, keep that business going for a long time. Right. Um, so I had the pleasure of, you know, seeing my own family go through that uh, twice. Right. And so it was a passion of mine to help in any way I could help those businesses transition between either in family generations or where they need to sell and, and relocate or, or do different things. Yep. So as my world evolved, I ended up with fewer and fewer clients. They were often uh, slightly larger or had more complex needs or things like that. And it was through um, serving those types of clients that I realized, like it really does take a, a village, right? right? To raise a child, to raise a business and having good partners um, made a world of difference to me. Mm -hmm. So I spent a lot of time with some kick-ass accountants and some really, um, you know, wonderful, talented lawyers inside this greater community. I was, I had clients over to Brampton and up to Alliston, Mount yeah, Forest okay. and all around. Good old farm country. Good farm country. Yeah. And uh, what I found was, you know, if you get all of your advisors on the same page, um, you are in really really good shape see that's really interesting to bring that up um i was i was meeting with troy and he was talking about a couple of things and he said you know um, we probably want to talk to your accountants about that right and i was like yeah okay well it's, you know dave's our guy yeah. over at uh, rlb and he's like yeah okay well, let's go talk go talk to dave and let me know and i was like well what if we just do a working lunch and get you and dave and peter and mike right all in the room together yeah to get rid of the broken telephone yeah and they agreed to it, so we haven't done it yet, but yeah. I, I'm hoping it's kind of what you just said, mm -hmm. where 
we get everybody on the same page working together in good partnership. Yeah, and we do, we uh, do a lot of that. So obviously, in my old bank role, I got to to facilitate quite a bit of that, where it was like, okay, what's going on? Because especially if there is a change in your business, anybody's business, it's good to ask the question, like check the boxes, make sure you've had the conversation. Right. Um, because if you got it right, that's perfect. But at least you have the reassurance that you have got it right. So what kind of stuff are you referring to? Just for like the business owners so out there? So for the entrepreneurs and business owners out there, um, you know, you have started up a business. Um, it's the, the Katie Cheeseman business. Um, Great I'm a, business. I'm a sole proprietor all by myself selling my widget or doing my service, whatever that might look like. Yep. And um, then, you know, I've been pretty successful at it. And I, I think, oh, now, now I might need to incorporate that business. And do I need to? Should I? What, 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 what kind of questions are those? That's and, a really interesting point. There's so many times, and actually specifically in the last like, month, I've heard yeah. two or three people that didn't have revenue that incorporated right out of the gate. Right. Right out of skate. And I was like, why did you do that? And they're like, well, because yeah. I'm, I'm incorporating. I, I have to. And I was right. like, okay, that's interesting. So, I, But they didn't go through that process yeah. to talk to some people and be like, is this the right choice yeah. right now? And sometimes it is the right choice. So um, I'm going to plug a little here. Yeah, yeah plug um, it up. You can, uh, you can follow the RLB and Amplify uh, blogs and one of the articles that we've written, because it is one of the most commonly asked questions, is when should I incorporate? Right. And there are a number of different factors. It's, no answer is the same for any one person. And, right. and if there was one thing that I would say to a, a business owner of any kind, no, just because you're stood at the water cooler with your friend or you're at a chamber breakfast and this person's done this, it doesn't always mean that that's right for you, right? right? So have, have the conversation. And if there's one thing the team at uh, you know at RLB and all of the other advisors, whether it's the great bankers that we have in this community, the great lawyers, whatever, it's all about literally sitting down and, and having some some conversations. About, yeah, is, is this is the right thing for me? Right. And you might have a very very different reason for doing something. For whatever it is you're doing. Than yeah, than cool. your neighbor business. So, so. we forgot. I I totally derailed you no, um, okay. RBC you know how many years are you there uh, nine and then you switched ish. over to RLB and you got a logo on I think the seatbelts got yeah, you covered so you can get a little right. yeah there it is RLB boom we're not gonna make any jokes about me putting you know sales merchandise on my chest are we like we've, we've I didn't even go we've there we've done that once or twice oh recently, I think right? I think I'm gonna get in trouble now yeah no oh well that's, <laughs> that's our underlying the seatbelt coming we can put it up a little bit maybe but no yeah. we're good we're good so no. what made you decide to go to RLB so I had worked with all these these great business owners, and and sometimes for many different reasons they they didn't necessarily have an accountant in their corner who was uh, looking forward with them. Right. And I think that's the best way of putting it is there are a lot of great small uh, accounting practitioners in our community. There's a lot of great really large firms in our industry. You know our industry full stop is lucky that it has a professional body and anybody that um, is part of that is you know upholding some some really high yeah, standards. Yeah, standards, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the way that that I found working with RLB was they offered really big firm services. So um, if I have a business and again in agriculture or my commercial clients, sometimes these were either highly complicated high conflict right. or high dollars and you want to make sure that what you're doing in reorganizing your business uh, you know restructuring that business or thinking about selling the business thinking about handing the business over to somebody else or growing it internationally yeah or yeah, yeah. Uh, whether you're looking for new markets um, that you have a team that had things like the the tax planning capabilities that you would want um, that maybe you are looking at you know some human resources consulting concerns um, maybe you needed that US tax piece that you had a need for an expertise like agriculture or construction or medical professionals and and what I found with RLB was the firm was big enough that it had 
some of like the most awesome talented people inside of our community that could offer these services yeah but they were grassroots right right these are people that could have easy conversations that could sit at my clients kitchen table um, that would you know literally have the kids at the the boardroom table or yeah. you know and it's happened um, I was also a, a touch bias and I, I share this with many of our new or prospective clients 15 years ago when we moved our business to this country we became clients of RLB. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Awesome. It's, it's uh, It was a fantastic partnership and choice, and we did start with a different firm, and it, it just didn't quite align for us. Yeah. And then my family um, were introduced to the team uh, in the Fergus office, <laughs> and, you know, big happening spot. And then we realized what was behind that with the, the Guelph team and the Kitchener team and um, what we were looking to do and, and where our own family farm future w was going. Yeah. And uh, they helped us through a, a couple of quite complex transactions ourselves. Right. So once I'd experienced that, I, you know, honestly, from the other side of the table, would would speak about that experience with with clients of mine right that's a um, cool perspective to have yeah for sure yeah and uh, so I, I find today you know I'm not an accountant and I'm I'm okay with that yeah so segue perfect yeah I mean it seems like business development and uh, you know getting the team buy-in on different initiatives to like make yeah. the whole needle move and growing the whole company yep. is big on your plate Yep. so what kind of strategies tactics tips tricks do you use your day in day out to help grow a business so we um, look at RLB through uh, the lens of if you got great people and then you add good process you often end up with profitability. Right. And uh, people today, I think, in our business are, and in any business, are your number one asset. I couldn't agree more. Um, if you've got good people with the right attitude, you know, we were very fortunate that we were just recognized as one of the top 10 corporate cultures in Canada. Crazy, congratulations, know, that's thank amazing. Thank you. Yeah, we're pretty, pretty pumped about that because what that means to us, and the same with, you know, best small and, and medium sized uh, businesses. We've, we've been recognized at a platinum level for the last three years for that. It's all about the team. So then what do you do to keep that going or to get the word out or like, how does how does that end up living, how do you end up living that out? Right. Um, personally, I, I think that day to day I'm like, I'm just a professional cheerleader. <laughs> yeah. I'm not the stretchy you know, kind. I, you know what though? Not I, the bendy kind. I know you. Right. So I think there's more to it. Right. There so, is. So, I mean, like, how big is the team? The team right now is about 130 people. Okay. So 130 people. And let's say you have an initiative and half of them need to get on board. How long does that take to happen? And what type of tips and tricks do you use to make that come to life? Because getting a group of people to buy into a new behavior, yep. in my experience, is very difficult. Yeah. So I'm going to use uh, Bill Kay's words. So Bill's managing partner of our firm. And, and a uh, good dude. Shout out to Bill. Yeah. Big shout out to Bill. Yeah. Um, he always talks, and he's an, an excellent process guide to you, but he talks about if you set expectations and you communicate and you work out who is in control, usually if you've got those three things covered, nothing fewer things go wrong right because people know what's expected of them or know what's you know know what's going on um, and then you communicate talk about it like right. actually have the discussion what do you want what do you need um, and then who owns it uh, so inside the building you know inside of our team and I have a, a, a cool piece of information to, to share it just went live through social media and through our blog we now have an Orangeville office. Whoa! Yeah. That's super exciting. Yeah, shared space with a fabulous uh, engineering firm over there in Orangeville. Awesome. So like downtown? or? Yeah, right downtown. Cool. So Broadway and, and First and um, 
So we've done business in that community for a long time. Yeah, yeah, that's great. But uh, they're an awesome by local community, just like like many of the other ones that we serve. So yeah, yeah, cool. Little physical presence there. So then coming back to this idea of. Um, you know, ownership on a new initiative, yep. expectations, yep. and communicate, communicate, yeah. communicate. Yep. So conceptually, that makes a lot of sense. Yep. Tactically, what do you do? Tactically, so a few tools that we would use internally. We use Slack as a communication tool. Awesome. We just started using it. Too. Um, we find that uh, many of our team. It's good for team motivation. We have a random channel that people use informally and then lots of formal channels to to get the people who need to know in the know yep. and then people who maybe just want sideline information and, and again are interested but not directly involved, can check they it can check it out too. Without making their inbox go through the roof. Right, right, exactly. Cool. Um, personally, I am... Uh, the kind of individual who loves one-on-one -on -one communication. Yeah. Love to have a conversation with somebody, um, talk through what something would mean. So I totally agree with you. Mm -hmm. What would you say to the person, because I've heard a lot of people that say, how do you find the time to do that? What do you say to the person that says, I don't have the time to do that? Like sleep is optional? <laughs> oh, sorry. You mean for real? Yeah, no, I mean, that's for real. Yeah, um, again, a clear message of delivery, I think, is is important. Yeah. Um, but what do you what do you say to the person that says I don't have enough time to meet with people one on one? Like, I, my my group's eighty people. How am I going to meet with everybody one on one? Okay, sit down and look at the list of what you do every day, and work out all the stuff that you shouldn't be doing, and give that to somebody else. And then. And then start communicating because if you are not actively involved with your team of people. Uh, if you're passive and distant or in an ivory tower, um, you're you're not going to succeed. Good luck. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. love that. Enjoy. I think what you I think that that nugget there was fantastic. Like, um, for use, a, use technology too. Like we have now four offices, and we use GoToMeeting or Skype all the time. That you can deliver a message. I am um, at the. the the, the pleasure this year, you know, my family itself is growing and my responsibilities are, are changing. And um, I gave a, a delivery of a workshop from my kitchen the other day, yeah, okay, which was internal. So cool. And the cat joined in, but, <laughs> but it's like, use the tools at your fingertips to make your life that much better, but don't forget about being connected to your people. Cool. So then, um, People count, right? Oh, well played. Sorry. No, that's great. That was really well done. Thanks. And like right at the end too. Yeah. Uh, but one last thing before we go. Yeah. Uh, I kind of mentioned this before we started. What's one kind of idea that you keep in between your ears, um, or that you live by? A saying? Uh, I don't know. If there's a leader or a philosophy that you have that you kind of use every day to kind of keep you on track, to keep one foot and keep your pace, like you're going. So. Yeah. What, what kind of things do you keep in mind, or what's the one thing that? So keeps you driving the way you, you know go. there there's lots of really great people out there and I, I I certainly follow a lot of famous ones that other people might default to but I'm gonna not be emotional and I'm gonna give you a default um, a great mentor of mine just passed away long 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 before he said uh, part of the RBC team Greg Mitchell right and uh, it fits with what we've been talking about here today which is surround yourself with people he always used to joke and say that are better than you are mm -hmm. because they make you great. Awesome. And what I think that means is that find people that have energy, that have talents, understand what they are, put them in the right place to be successful, and then work all together and create awesomeness because that's really what happens. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for having me. All right, see you guys. Bye. Bye.